What's up? Merite here. And now, we will be covering the muscles of the forearm, which, as you know, are a part of the upper limb. So the muscles of the upper limb are divided into four parts according to their anatomical location. The first group are the muscles of the shoulder joints, then we have the muscles of the arm, muscles of the forearm, and then we have the muscles of the hand. So again, the muscles of the forearm are what we're going to focus on, and they're divided into three main groups. We have the anterior group, or the flexor muscles, we have the lateral group on the radial side, and we have a posterior group, the extensors. So let's work our way through all of these muscles here, starting with the anterior group. Alright, so here we see an anterior view of the forearm. The anterior group are divided into four layers. The fourth layer being closest to the bone, and the first layer being the most superficial layer. The first layer consists of the palmaris longus, flexor carpi radialis, pronator teres, and flexor carpi ulnaris, PFPF. The second layer is the flexor digitorum superficialis, the third layer is the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor pollicis longus, and the fourth layer is the pronator quadratus. Now let's start with the deep and then go superficially. So the pronator quadratus is located down here, down here, zooming in to see it better. It originates from the anterior surface of the ulna and inserts at the anterior surface of the radius. Its function is pronation of the forearm, so rotation of the palm to the back. So it's a very small and straightforward muscle. Now, let's do the third layer of the flexor muscles. The first one is the flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor digitorum profundus look like this. It's easiest to see its tendons if you highlight it. It originates from the anterior surface of the ulna, as you see here, and inserts at the base of the distal phalanges of the second to the fifth fingers, as you see here. This muscle is responsible for flexion of the second to the fifth fingers at the metacarpophalangeal and the interphalangeal joints, as well as accessory flexion of the hand. So that's this muscle. Next we have the flexor pollicis longus, which is here. It originates from the anterior surface of the radius and inserts at the base of the distal phalanges of the thumb, or the first finger. And when the muscle fibers of this muscle contract, they flex the thumb at the metacarpophalangeal and the interphalangeal joints, as well as help with accessory flexion of the hand. And that was the third layer. Next we have the second layer, which consists of the flexor digitorum superficialis, this large muscle here. This muscle originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, it originates from the ulna and the anterior surface of the radius. Then it inserts at the base of the middle phalanges of the second to the fifth fingers. And when it contracts, it flexes the second to fifth fingers at the metacarpophalangeal joints and the proximal interphalangeal joints. And it also helps with accessory flexion of the hand. So that is the second layer. The first layer, which is the most superficial layer, consists of these muscles you see here. These are the pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. All of these muscles, mainly, originate from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Mainly, to keep it simple. But they have different insertion points and therefore some slight differences in function. The first one, pronator teres, inserts at the anterior lateral surface of the radius, around here, and its function is in its name. It helps pronating the arm by pulling the radius medially, and it also helps with flexing of the lower arm as well. Next, the flexor carpi radialis inserts at the base of the second to the third metacarpal bones, down here. This muscle will flex the hand, as well as adduct the hand. Next we have the palmaris longus. The palmaris longus inserts at a structure called the palmar aponeurosis. The palmar aponeurosis is a fibrous triangle covering the palm to protect the neurovascular structures underneath it. And it also fuses with the superficial palmar fascia at some parts. We will talk about this one in detail when we cover the fascia of the upper limb. Now, the main muscle of the palmaris longus is to flex the hand. The last one is the flexor carpi ulnaris, which inserts at medial structures of the wrist, like the pisiform and the hamatum, as well as the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. And the function of this muscle is to flex the hand, as well as adducting the hand. So, that was all the muscles of the flexor group. Next, let's look at the lower arm from this perspective, to cover the muscles of the radial side. The radial muscles, or the lateral muscles, are grouped as superficial layer and the deep layer, the superficial layer consists of the brachio radialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and extensor carpi radialis brevis. 
The D player consists of the supinator, so let's do the D player first and then work our way from there. So the supinator looks like this. It originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, radial collateral ligaments, and the ulna, and it inserts at the lateral surface of the radius. Its function is supination of the forearm, so rotating it like this. Then we have the superficial layer, and our first muscle is the brachioradialis muscle, which is here. It originates from the margin of the humerus and inserts at the radius, above the styloid process as you see here. And the function of this muscle is alternating between supination and pronation. It supinates on an extended forearm and pronates on a flexed forearm. It also flexes the forearm and fibers of this muscle stabilizes the elbow joint. Alright. Next we have the extensor carpi radialis longus. The extensor carpi radialis longus originates from the lateral margin and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and inserts at the base of the second metacarpal bone on the backside. And when this muscle contracts, it abducts and extends the hand backwards. That's this one. Next we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis, which originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and inserts at the base of the third metacarpal bone on the backside. It has the same functions as the extensor carpi radialis longus, which is abduction of the hand and extension of the hand. So that was the lateral muscles of the lower arm. Now let's look at the forearm from this perspective and cover the extensor muscles. The extensor muscles are also divided into superficial and deep layers. The superficial ones are the extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. And the deep layer consists of the abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis and longus, and extensor indicis. Now let's fill up the posterior forearm starting with the deepest muscles. The first one is the abductor pollicis longus, which is this one. It originates from the posterior surface of the ulna and radius, as well as the interosseous membrane between them. It then inserts at the base of the first metacarpal bone, and as the name says, it mainly abducts the thumb. Next is the extensor pollicis brevis, which is down here. It originates from the posterior surface of the radius, as well as the interosseous membrane, and it inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And when it contracts, it extends and abducts the thumb, this direction. Then we have the long version of the extensor pollicis brevis, called the extensor pollicis longus, which is longer, as you see here. It originates from the posterior surface of ulna this time, and the interosseous membrane. It then inserts at the distal phalanx of the thumb, and its function is extension of the thumb, pulling it backwards. The last deep player muscle is the extensor indices, which is this one. It originates from the posterior surface of ulna and the interosseous membrane, just like the extensor pollicis longus, and it inserts at the base of the middle and the distal phalanx of the index finger. Indices means index finger. So its function is extension of the index finger, which is the second finger. So that was all the deep muscles of the posterior group of the forearm. Now let's cover the superficial muscles. The first one is the extensor digitorum muscle, which looked like this. It originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and it inserts at the base of the middle and the distal phalanges of the second to the fifth fingers. The function of the extensor digitorum is to abduct the fingers and also extension of the hand, pulling it backwards. Then we have the extensor digiti minimi, which is this one. Extensor digiti minimi originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and then inserts at the base of the middle and the distal phalanges of the fifth finger. The name of the muscle is extensor digiti minimi, so the major function of this muscle is extension of the little finger. Then we have the extensor carpi ulnaris, which is this one. It originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and the posterior surface of the ulna, and it inserts at the base of the fifth metacarpal bone, on the medial side. And the function of this muscle is extension of the hand and adduction of the hand. So that was all the muscles of the posterior group of the lower arm. I know it's a lot of muscles, but I promise once you go through them a couple of times, they will get easier to visualize. In the next video, we will take a look at the muscles of the hand.